Okay, good afternoon. Uh, so it's 2.30, we're running 15 minutes late, but I think it's time to kickstart the afternoon session. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, our second session is called Going with Gaganyan, and uh, as most of you are aware, Gaganyan is uh, India's first crewed space flight program. Uh, my name is Kaushik Vishwanathan, I'm an assistant professor in mechanical engineering at IAC. I will be chairing this session. Um, so the speakers who are going to be here, who are, who are here with us, um, are all working on payloads or working towards developing payloads that will eventually go on the first or maybe the second uncrewed Gaganyan flight. So uh, we're very excited to have them here and uh, we're happy they could make it to the entire conference. So uh, it gives me great pressure to invite our first speaker, um, Dr. Ravi Kumar Hosamani and uh, Dr. Srija Lakshmi. Um, who will be talking about a fruit fly payload on Gaganyan to study kidney stone formation in space. Sure. Um, since we're a little bit constrained on time, uh, we'll try to keep the presentations to 15 minutes flat. So that will be 12 minutes and about three minutes for questions. Uh, when the 12 minutes are up, I'll, I'll be sitting here, I'll get up and start walking towards the dais. Okay. Um, hello, uh, good afternoon everyone. I'll try my level best to not to induce any more sleep uh, in my talk. So just to introduce myself, I'm Ravik Mohan Hasmani. Uh, I'm an assistant professor at the University of Agriculture Sciences, Dharwad. And before that, I was working as a NASA postdoctoral program fellow and research faculty briefly. Uh, close to seven years, I was at NASA Ames Risk Center. And uh, after moving back to India, I was interested to pursue this uh, flight experiments and space, bi space biology studies. And coincidentally, at that time, there was an announcement by the government of India Gaganyan program is going on, so we jumped into and in collaboration with the uh, Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology to Andram, we submitted this proje project, uh, which mainly deals with the, we are trying to exploit this fruit fly model for understanding the uh, kidney stone formation in the space. Um, so this is tentative schedule, what we know right now. I mean, of course, if there is any corrections, ISRO people should tell us. So what we know is the, the Gaganyan is planned for five to seven days mission. And after seven days, it will splash down at the Arabian Ocean off to the Gujarat coast. And from there, we're going to retrieve the samples, live samples, fruit fly samples, and then we do the lot of post-flight studies. And what we have done so far, ground studies on this mission in IST and University of Agriculture Science, Darwar, I'm going to talk about that. But again, this is five to seven days mission actually, but it might, you know, due to the various reasons, it could be one day, two day, three days, four days, five days, seven days mission, we have to plan the science mission in such a way that at least even if there is one day mission on the space flight in the low earth orbit, we should be able to get some science data out of it. That's the plan, what we have done so far. And in, in that direction, we're working on the ground control studies. Uh, so first and foremost important is we need to understand why these astronauts are more vulnerable for the kidney stone formation, right? So there is, there is a evidence report from the JSE in 2017 um, in the human research program, which clearly shows that astronauts are reported kidney stones post-flight more than 30 times. There was one instance where cosmonaut was supposed to come back due to the kidney stone issue, and for some, you know, luckily he escaped because of the stones were passed through the urine. So that was uh, that was the condition generally we have in the astronauts. And most of the time, in order to keep away these kidney stones, astronauts will have this potassium citrate, which is recommended by the uh, doctors, and that's how they will try to reduce the potential kidney stone formation in the space. And most important is the kidney stones are formed much more vulnerable, astronauts are much more vulnerable for the kidney stone is because of the bone demineralization we have. Because calcium, obviously, you know, bone mineralization, muscle loss is much more significant in the, uh, in the space flight conditions. And because of that, calcium will leach out and that will deposit and that will form the nucleation of calcium with the oxalate formation leads to the kidney stone formation. And dietary, if, if you look at the dietary intake of these astronauts, mostly it is dehydrated food. That is another reason why it is contributing for the kidney stone formation in, this, in the astronauts. And as a result of that, urine output is very low, pH is highly acidic and citrate concentration, which is supposed to alkalize these uh, stones, is also significantly low. These are the, some of the reasons why you have the kidney stone uh, formation much more high in astronauts compared to the ground control. So this is another data I just wanted to give you. Again, this is from the evidence report in 2017 by the JSE, Johnson Space Center, Houston, which clearly shows post-flight hypercalciuria, citrateuria, magnesiuria, uric acid, calcium oxalate, these are almost doubled post-flight compared to the pre-flight condition. 
which clearly indicates these astronauts are much more vulnerable in case of uh, kidney stone formation. In among them, obviously, calcium oxalate, because in the ground also, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the normal condition, what we experience is 80% of us is going to experience the calcium oxalate stones, not the uric acid. Uric acid is only 10% of us will experience. So that's the reason why we use this calcium oxalate model in the fruit fly, and I'm going to talk about that more on that. Uh, just to give you the perspective about how, you know, you must be wondering how you are relieving, how you are, you know, trying to extrapolate these uh, kidney stone model in fruit flies of the human beings. And of course, you know that, you know, it has got like seven Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine. It is a very relevant model for the human disease conditions. But in terms of kidney stones, of course, it is not structurally, it is not as similar as human kidneys. But functional analysis remarkably comes out between fruit fly malfusion tubules. These are the malfusion tubules. And these malfusion tubules are equivalent to the human glomerulus, which is mainly responsible for. And similar to that, in the kidney, in the malfusion tubules, we have two types of cells. One is principal cells, and the another one is stellate cells. These are equivalent to the human principal cells and the intercalate cells in the kidneys, actually. So they do the same function as are the urine production, as well as removing the metabolic waste from the hemolymph in the lumen of malfusion tubules. That's why the function conservation between the malfusion tubules and the kidneys are remarkable, although structurally they are entirely different. That is also an advantage. A simpler model, much more easy to understand at cellular and molecular mechanism because there is no intricacy of cell-to-cell -cell connection, tissue-to-tissue -tissue connection. That will make much more important model for understanding cellular and molecular pathology of these kidney stones. So all you need to do is to induce the kidney stone, allow these fruit flies, both males and females, together or separate on the ethylene glycol, or hydroxyl proline, or sodium oxalate for two to three days. Within three days, you should be able to see the calcium oxalate formation in the malfusion tubules, as you can see in this picture. And we have done some work with the ground studies for the Gaganyaan mission. I'm going to talk about that a little more. Uh, so the objective of the payload was obviously we wanted to quantify in the Gaganyaan mission, um, we wanted to quantify these calcium oxalate stones in the spaceflight condition compared with the ground control and see how they are different in terms of chemical structure and composition. And the second objective was, again, because it's a simpler model, we wanted to understand the molecular mechanism by doing very basic omics studies like transcriptome or proteomics. Then we also have our collaborator, Dr. Shijalakshmi is here actually, in the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology. They have a set of chemical library we wanted to screen out and see if they are, any of them are, are having these antilithogenic properties so that we can try to use them for the countermeasuring these uh, kidney stone formation in the space condition. Of course, we need to do the hardware development that we have almost done with that. Uh, so this is the fruit fly habitat development we have done so far. And again, th there is no rocket science here. And as somebody in the speakers was mentioning, you make it more and more automation, it will actually increase the risk of failure of experiments. So we wanted to keep it as simple as possible. It All it has is, it's 186, 127.5 and 190 mm size. It, it weighs around 2.3 kgs, and which is having, you know, the socket for holding around 20 standard fruit fly wires. And you can see also a lot of vents on the top of that so that they can breathe properly and happily they can live in that. And all you need to do is you take this to the space and put them in the crew model and then you bring it back and make sure that life flies are live back. So then we'll take them and do some dissection and go for the kidney stone estimation. So this is the very simplest. We are not using any electronics, any sensors in this one. The idea is just to make sure that we bring them back in the healthy and live condition to start with. So uh, this is uh, the experimental plan is basically we are trying to use the kidney stone uh, model for the Cantonese wild flies. And again, we're not using any mutants here. Of course, we do have the mutants in the kidney stain also. Uh, so as soon as we get these flies from the um, you know, Gujarat coast, we'll drive down to the lab and look at the kidney stone formation, molecular mechanism, and drug screening studies. So, uh, so far, uh, science optimization we have done on the ground in order to make it succeeded in the uh, spaceflight condition is, uh, we tested two different types of diets. One is regular diet, another one is enriched diet. And there's only difference between those two diets is actually, uh, the enriched diet is having little more higher concentration of micronutrients, macronutrients, plus it is much more moist compared to the regular diet. Because you know that space flight is basically stressful environment. We don't, we, have, we wanted to make sure that they are enriched with the food so that 
the 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 stress should not be one of the factor which is contributing for the kidney stone formation that's the reason why we tested both and we you know narrowed it down for the enriched diet uh, in order to make sure that we are maintaining the good health of these flies uh, then we tested biocompatibility test uh, with the hardware of course you know this hardware is very simple we degas them we ensure that these flies are happily living and you know going through the different life stages like egg embryo larvae and pupal stage and adult flies adult flies without any problem that biocompatibility test we have done so far and we also tested there are three important chemicals that can be used for inducing kidney stones one is ethylene glycol hydroxyalpuronine and we also tested the sodium oxalate among them we think that ethylene glycol is the best one actually because ethylene glycol was able to induce kidney stones very effectively within 2 to 3 days if you use the high concentration little bit higher but if you use the other chemicals actually they will induce a lot of mortality so it, the in that sense ethylene glycol was the best bet for us because we were you know trying to imagine even the worst condition of mission if it is one day two day mission we should be able to get some science data out of it that's the reason why we chose the ethylene glycol is the best bet for us and we again tested both males and females we were confused whether we had to send the males alone or females alone whether together because we know that in the kidney stones generally in 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 human beings three times more vulnerable males are three times more vulnerable compared to the females and we were wondering about it and whether we have to send only males or females then again with lot of studies you know we, we i'm going to talk about that we decided to fly both males and females because there is no reason uh, you know unlike humans we did not find there is a differential kidney stone formation in the males and females although there is a slight increased trend in the male but it was not statistically significant and that is one reason another reason why we chose both males and females together is they might they will be able to lay eggs larvae and pupae even if it is 2 3 days 4 days mission we should be able to get some live backs fly you know if if not the adult flies at least we should be able to get the uh, larvae and uh, pupae and uh, you know egg stays those are very important samples for us to do some science experiments that's the reason why we decided to fly both male and female together and we also optimized whether how many flies needs to be sent to the space right in a each while again based on my experience at nasa because we we sent a lot of crew flies to the international space station uh, when i was working for nasa ames based on that experience based on the ground studies 10 females and 5 males is good enough because if there is a 7 days mission probably they will lay in each one of these females can lay egg actually 100 eggs in a day and within 3 or 4 days you have like plenty of eggs and uh, larvae developed if it is too overcrowded that will actually impact the developmental stages that's the reason why we wanted to go with minimum number of males and maximum number of fem females and together 15 is max so these are the some of the science experiments we have done but more interesting data i'm going to talk about these is actually this one so again as i mentioned we were worried about whether we have to send for the genetic mutants or whether we have to send the chemical induced kidney stones right so in genetic mutants obviously we have a rosy mutant called rosy mutant these rosy mutants actually uh these are uric acid model and uric acid is not very common for us calcium oxalate model is more relevant for us and ethylene glycol is the one which is actually uh inducing these calcium oxalates that's the reason why we decided to go for the um you know ethylene glycol induced as you can see in the data there is significantly higher uh, calcium oxalate formation compared to the rosy mutants where we have only the uric acid component then again the males and females we tested again you can see the blue one there is a little higher tendency as we have seen in the hu human beings also males are much more vulnerable compared to the females but it is not statistically significant so that is you know that's why we decided to go for that we did, we tried different concentration of ethylene glycol 0.5 one and 1.5% and 1 and 1.5% as you know expected there was good number of increase in the uh, you know uh, increase in the kidney stones but unfortunately it was also inducing a lot of mortality so we wanted to make sure that uh we have the minimum number of kidney stones formed but the live flies coming back from the space that is an important part of our mission then we tested young flies middle aged flies old flies one day two day a uh, one day three day five days seven days nine days 10 days 11 days and again you can see the 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 quantitative data in that there is as we increase the number of duration of exposure there is definitely increase in the kidney stone formation and very significantly compared to young kind you know old flies middle flies middle aged flies are more vulnerable for the formation of kidney stones that's what we have 
observed. And this is again one more data point. We decided to go with the males and females together, middle-aged flies, 50 number flies. Those are the data point we got this one. Uh, so again, again, this is what we have. Again, it's going to be same thing repeated again. So I'm not going to read out. So the, the take home message is we are, as far as science experiment is concerned in the Gaganyan, we are almost, we are very sure that we are ready to fly. In terms of hardware, in terms of science, I'll be done. So, uh, so that's it. And uh, I do, I'm also working on the plant system. So uh, if you're interested, please go through some of the posters we have. Uh, the hypergravity as a novel tool we have published in scientific report as well as genomics. We're trying to exploit the hypergravity for the terrestrial agriculture purpose. And we also have moon soil simulant received from the ISRO center. We're trying to test out whether plants can grow in that. If not, obviously, moon soil is not going to help in growing plants, but how do you amend that using some of the, cocoa pit is the very easiest one we're using it. So with that, I would like to thank the ISRO uh, HSSC uh, for funding this uh, project and uh, IAC for giving this opportunity to talk about our payload. And if you have more questions, Dr. Shijal Lakshmi is also here. She'll be happy to answer. I'll be here. Any questions? Yeah, thank you. Uh, in the interest of time, if we have one very quick question, otherwise we'll... Yeah, very quick question, please. Uh, have you restricted the mobility of these flies while injecting your chemical? Because no, we, come... we are not injecting. We are just adding into the food and we are allowing them to feed it. It's a dietary component, basically. Okay. We're not injecting. We're just allowing them to feed on the diet which is having these chemicals. You can inject actually. <laughs> you can, there are there are a lot of uh, research you can easily inject into the. But yeah, you can. But with this one, simplest one, we are trying to do it. Okay. If there are more questions, I suggest we take this a little offline. Uh, we just have a quick. Yeah. yeah. So uh, thank you one and all for listening to our payload development story. So if you are uh, if you are interested in knowing the current status of space biology research in IAST and their payload development. You are most welcome to the laboratories of Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, where we have a space biology lab, and the flies are happily living there. <laughs> Thank you so much once again.